Okay. Welcome. My baby got me this turtle. <laughs> he's 18 now, so he's not much of a baby anymore. But today I'm going to be talking about Torah observers. Now, I didn't even know this was a thing. I don't know if I've just been in my own bubble, you know, but I, I didn't even know that there was a thing. I know. It, it sounds silly, but I really did it. And hearing the arguments online, I decided to look into it. And I found a couple of people and I was listening to different testimonies and what people had to say about it. So I wanted to do a video on it from, from an observer, you know, somebody that's come in not knowing anything about where they stood and just listen to what they had to say. And this is what I found for me. So I was listening to a debate that was going on between four men and, you know, they, they say things like, we're saved by grace. You know, of course you cannot earn your righteousness, but, you know, now we've been empowered to be able to fulfill the law and to do these things. And to me, it just sounds like double-mindedness. Oh, no, 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 you're saved by faith. You cannot earn your salvation. But the but part is that confuses me, especially when they talk about observing the law, because what came to my mind was Jesus. In his time, I'm sure the Pharisees saw him to be a lawbreaker, according to their understanding. Now, hear me out. I'm not saying that Jesus was a lawbreaker, but hear me out. The first example that I'm going to give them to give five. The woman with the issue of blood. First of all, it was unlawful for her to be out there bleeding, according to Levitical law. Not only that, but she had the audacity to touch the teacher. <laughs> He didn't correct her on how she was breaking the law to be there, but he, he went directly into her faith. Your faith has made you well. The second instance was Jesus and the leopard. Now the leopard was also breaking the law according to Levitical law, being there. Not only that, but he's supposed to yell, unclean, unclean, and he did not do that. And on top of that, Jesus touched him, which is against Levitical law because you're not supposed to touch anything that's unclean. The third thing is the person that he heals on the Sabbath day. And I never understood it until looking into it when the, the leader of the synagogue got up and said, you know, there are six days to work, you know, come on those days, but don't do it on the Sabbath day. But Jesus looked at them at their hardness of heart. He was angry at that. And then he comes out and he heals him anyways. And he says to them, is it good to do evil or good on the Sabbath? And they couldn't answer him. The fourth one is the disciples plucking the grain, the grain heads on the Sabbath day. And the Pharisees, they were tight. <laughs> look at your disciples. Look at what they're doing on the Sabbath day. They are not allowed to do that. And he gives them the example of David. And then the cherry on top for me the woman caught in adultery. Now they thought they had him. <clears throat> Teacher, we caught this woman in adultery. Now Moses says that we are to stone such a woman. What do you say? So Jesus gets down on the ground, writes his little thing, gets back up and says, he who was without sin can cast the first stone. All of these instances seem as if he doesn't follow the law, which is not true though. And the reason why I say it's not true is because they failed to understand it. Every time they approached him, even when they sent people to try to trap him, he, he said to them directly, it's either you don't know God or you don't know the word. One or the other has taken place. So I wrote down here, we were the bleeding woman. We were the leopard. We were the unclean. He is the Sabbath. He is all of the sacrifice. He is the cleansing blood. They could not see the story, the condition of man, and the Messiah, God's plan. They just couldn't see it. So when it comes to the law, it's like when I hear them, I'm just thinking, you guys don't see it. And it's, and it's very clear. It sounds a lot like double-mindedness. Not only that, but it's like a, a blindness that they're reading scripture to try to validate their point when they come across the word law. See, right there, right there, it says, you know, we're supposed to, uh, the law, the law. And I'm just like, yeah, but he's talking about a new law. And I think that that's something that they miss. That just because it says law, he's not always referring 
to the Mosaic law. Because there is a new law and a new command in the new covenant of grace. <laughs> like there's a whole new administration that they completely do not see. The, the, the law now is to believe in the one that he sent. And the command is to love one another as I have loved you. Jesus didn't even give the, the, the command as a blanket to, hey, love each other because that's what we're, we're supposed to do. No. This is love. Not that you loved God, but that God loved you. And the more that you embrace that love, the love naturally flows out of you. It, it is the very love of God that flows from you. So the only way that you can actually love people is by first embracing the love of God for you. And it happens like that with everything in God. So that's another thing that I noticed. On top of that, I see that it's not really much of the spirit leading from within in their conversation. There's not really much of a, a revealing of Christ. Now, do we read the Old Testament? Absolutely. But again, like I said, he was all of these types and shadows in, in the past. Everything that you see in the Old Testament from Genesis to Revelation, it's, it's all about Christ. It's all about Jesus. So when we're reading the Old, we're looking to find him in it. He is the typology in all of the stories. So that's what we're looking to. And as we see that, we grow in understanding the character of God, the nature of God, um, the way that he operates, the way that he speaks. And as we're growing in that, we, we become more fine-tuned to the voice that is within, the Holy Spirit leading us from within. But I don't find that in their speech. It, it's observing and them trying to affirm their position. But, I, but what I see is that they have exchanged the spirit for the letter. And the reason why I find this to be dangerous is because as much as you could say that we are not saved by our works, okay, that's fine. You agree with the, the salvation of the spirit. The spirit man is made righteous. There's no way that you can be righteous before God apart from Jesus Christ. Okay, we agree. But the sad part is, is that you put a stumbling block in the way of the salvation of the soul. You don't point to the revelation of Christ, which is the only way that we are healed and made whole in the soul. The Word of God says that we are transformed by beholding. Paul didn't affirm the law. That's why he said that everything that I knew back then, I counted all dung. The only thing that I want to know is Christ and Christ crucified because he understood that this transformation that grows, it happens from within, can only be by revelation by the Spirit of God. That's why Jesus said, upon this rock, I shall build my church. It is not flesh and blood that told you who I was, Peter. But it was the Father, through the Spirit, that showed you who I am. And He continues to follow that same pattern today. Do you want to observe the law and do the best that you can? That's great. That's fine, if that's what you want to do. But that will never produce the life that you really want to enjoy in God. Because even Paul said that the law had glory. Moses, there was glory in Moses, but it's a glory that is passing away. That's why you find people that may do well for a time and then they fall back. They do well for a time and then they fall back. They do well for a time and then they fall back. It never becomes of anything that is, I mean, absolutely wonderful in God that is ever growing. And that only comes in Christ. So when I hear them, I think this is dangerous because you hinder people from growing and seeing the truth in God. And I believe these people to be sincere. They're like a Paul. You know, that they were, they're zealous in what it is that they believe, but it's not according to the truth. They're ever seeking, but it never comes to knowledge. And at the end of it all, it reminds me of the scripture in Romans 10, uh, verse 3. For they do not understand God's way of making people right with himself. Refusing to accept God's way, they cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. Now, you can say that we believe we believe that you can't be right with God apart from Christ, that it is the gift of God. But in your getting on the salvation of the soul part, I kind of see that that's where they align. It's, it's trying to make it right through observing things. And, and it cannot come that way. In the word of God, it says that are we to sin that grace may abound. The reason why you're asking that question is because you lack understanding you don't understand what it is that God has done. That's why in your own human thinking, you can't reason that what 
they're just giving people a license to sin. It's like, no. If, if you understood the beholding of Christ, you would see that in the beholding of him, the spirit of God works from within and we're transformed. He, he changes our desires. We begin to latch on to all that Christ is. And I, and I know that it, it sounds harder just to hear it, but in practice, it's beautiful. This life in God is absolutely beautiful. And it is one of those things where, you know, where Jesus says it's like the wind. You don't know where it's coming or where it's going, but, 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 you, but you feel it. You know, it's one of those things where you, you look out and you have no idea how this grew. You know, we one watered, one seeded, but, but it was God that gave the increase. But how did it happen? <laughs> I don't know. But I know that he's faithful to his word. And as I trust in, in what he has said about me, because of what his son has done for me, I find fruit, I find growth, I find life, I find this connection with me and God where I'm always open before him. Before I used to, I remember the first time I went to, to, to yell out loud because I was so embarrassed about what I did. And I'm sitting there on the floor, I remember exactly where I was. And I'm just like, okay, I messed up when I did this. And I could almost hear Jesus laughing and, and throughout the years, I find that he is the one that I can speak to about everything. Nobody has to tell me to go to God about my, my failings. He's the first person I run to. Even when I'm angry, he's the first person I talk to because I know he's the only one that can balance this out. He's the only one that can give me right thinking. And you see this in David so often where one moment he's yelling about what it is that he hates, what he can't stand, what the people are doing, and then he breaks out in a praise. How did, how did that happen? Like, how are you going to start off with, 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 you know, hoping they whole family go to hell and they teeth be broken to praising God forevermore for his grace endureth forever? And like, you just, how do you get there? And it was the transfer of casting his care and his anger and everything before God and God saying, I'll take that and then I'll replace it. And he changes our speech. And I find that transformation throughout my life. So not to drift too much because I, I, I think that God is, and I don't think, I know that God is absolutely beautiful. And I want people to know this wonderful salvation that we have in God. What we're trying to do in our own ability, God has already provided in his son. And the more that we see that in him, the more free we become. Not free to sin, but free to embrace his love and be transformed by it. So, um, you know, that's that's the only thing I, I am going to continue digging into this because I do want to see it from their perspective and also answer it um, according to what I know about him and uh, to maybe give answer to it outside of just the the scripture war, because I find that in a lot of believers that it's not it, it, it's a lot of Bible verse fighting. Well, what about this verse? What about this verse? What about this verse? But okay, where's the life at? <laughs> you know, where give me Jesus in the middle and give me give him to me in a way that I can understand it. But attacking one another to prove one another's point, like that's not the point of anything that I'm saying. I honestly pray for these people that they would encounter the truth, that the Holy Spirit would open their eyes, that what they have been looking at, that he would reveal Christ in such a way that all of the information that they know, and it is a lot, that it would become alive to them. So, I mean, it's not coming from any place of trying to be right or wrong. This is not about right or wrong, but this really is an issue of life. How do we enjoy life as individuals in Christ? You know, it's got to be more than this. It's got to be more than just proving that you're right and the other person is wrong. Give me something that I can enjoy, <laughs> you know, give me something that's going to point me to the master so that I can get on with this life in him. So before I continue uh, going on and on and on, um, that's my two cents of, of what I've noticed and what I've seen. And I hope that that helps you. I am open to a conversation. I don't know if anybody will engage me on this, but I, I am open to it. Again, it's not looking to see who's right or wrong, but we want the truth. Because only in seeing the truth, only in seeing and understanding will we ever enjoy the life that has rightly been given to us, the inheritance that is rightly ours in Christ. So that's all that I have to share for today. I'm going to continue digging, but I know that you have been blessed in your hearing, family. Today is the day of salvation, the year of the Lord's favor. Bride of Christ, arise. Arise.